But I don't really know where uh, I don't really know what's going to happen now with uh, with this with this with this Ruiz business. But like I said, I've put my tuppence worth in now, and uh, that's all we can do, can't we? Really, all we can do is keep it real. But I want to see uh, Joshua out of his comfort zone now. I don't want to see Joshua fighting in England. They said America were where it at, and they were going to promote him in America. Now he's just got his ass kicked in America. And what 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 now? What are they, what are they gonna do now? What what's gonna happen now? I think I'll have to empty that bin in a bit because I'm all like T boy around here, aren't I? What's gonna happen now? I don't know what happens, but what I do know is this. I do know that he got his ass kicked. He got battered, and I mean battered. Like you've never seen anybody get battered by a small fat man. A six foot fat man beat him up. In fact he's five eleven and a half. A five foot eleven and a half guy beat a six foot six and a half guy up. Hey? Beat him up. Made him quit. He quit. He quit. Now Tony Bellew, the new company man of boxing, what what what's what what's he gonna do now? Is he going to come back? Is he going to come back and get on Sky and save Eddie Hearn's neck with these pay-per-views? Eh? Is Eddie going to be more humble? Because that's all it is, isn't it? I don't have anything personal against Eddie Hearn, but a lot of it is fraud and they've been conning fans, haven't they? They've been conning the fans with, with these uh, pay-per-views. 20 quid is, a, is scandalous. They've been conning the fans with this 20 quid. And uh, do you know what I mean? Eddie Hearn is the Donald Trump. Eddie Hearn is the Donald Trump, the Trump Meister. Trump, Trump, Trump. From a hand, tiny hands in the air. Trump, Trump, Trump. Uh, you see, you see where I'm coming from. What, what is going to happen? It's so like I'm saying here on this here. What happened to the bad man going round in gangs, knocking people out, smoking weed, knocking 160 pound guys out unconscious? Selling drugs. What happened to the bad man? The guy's a fraud and all you clowns saying I'm a hater. Fuck you. That's what I say. I'm not bothered about all them people. That Porky, you're a hater. Social media is going to go on fire now all laughing. Well, you've been laughing at all of us. You matchroom lot, haven't you? Piling them millions up. People in the boxing industry who don't say a word to you. Because they want to get their fighters out there. Listen. Why do you think Eddie Hearn has security all the time around him at these shows? He's fucking hated. People want to wring his fucking little spoilt brat neck. He's hated. Let me tell you, the man is fucking hated. Now, when I put my finger up to the corner of the screen in a minute, Nicola, I want you to put a photograph of Eddie Hearn up, making him look stupid, all right? There you go. Do as you're told. But the guy is hated. Joshua's a fraud. And like I said, somebody sent, somebody sent me a text saying, oh, you better not say anything about this and that. Listen, I'm glad Joshua got beat. And I'm going to have my day or my week. Because I deserve it. Because I tried my best, right, to get access to Sky Show. Tried my best. I went round all the houses and the word came back. Ross, you upset a few people. Blah de blah, you're not welcome. So that's that. There you go. Don't want to ask. So I sent a list of questions off, and this is what I want to ask. And I'm not going to get access, am I? Eddie Hearn's not going to be humble. Could you imagine Eddie Hearn getting and sending me an email saying, "Porky, do you know what? Let's start again, and I'm going to give you access." No, they're not going to do it, is he? They're not going to do it. Do you know why? Because they've got mega millions. He's got a private plate Rolls Royce. Half it, driving around in an half a million pound car. He lives in a big massive house, doesn't he? At Stock in Ingot Ingotston. In Essex. Fucking 
It's probably worth about three million quid. He's not bothered. Eddie Hearn's not bothered about what what the fans think or what I think. He's not bothered if I'm going to stick him on a billboard in Sheffield and Doncaster saying, Eddie, when are you going to come on channel? They're not going to come on, are they? The same as he's not going to go on Ultra Tech Sports Raw's channel. You're not going to go on there. They're not going to come on and answer questions because they're frightened. Boxing promoters are frightened about being exposed. That's just how it is. Just like Nigel Farage getting asked about his expenses and Tommy Robinson. When you, once you get exposed, you just go into your shell, don't you? You don't give it, you don't add fuel to it. Do you know what I mean? It's like every now and then we keep getting all our tweets on Twitter, they keep getting wiped out. That'll be somebody in the powers that be that's taking all our tweets off. All, all that time it takes to upload them videos and they just keep wiping them off. Do you know what I mean? That's what I'm up against. But we're going to keep soldiering on. It's just, it's part of the game, isn't it? Look. Joshua got confronted like Mike Tyson did. You know the bully? Listen to this, right? Do you know a bully? When a bully gets confronted, you're never the same again with that person. Ruiz confronted the bully. And that was it. And it's the Mike Tyson Buster Douglas syndrome, isn't it? Mike Tyson had never been in a fight, he'd never been down in his career. Joshua's been down many times, many times. Mike Tyson had only been dropped once and that were inspiring, wasn't it? All right? Oliver McCall dropped him, didn't he, inspiring. But other than that, up to that fight, he'd never been, he'd never been dropped, had he? Right? In a fight. Douglas put it on him, he stood up to the bully. And you know Mike Tyson, right? We never the same fighter again, worry. It had gone. Mentally, he were gone. Now, that's a bully being confronted. When have you ever seen Mike Tyson in a fight where they've been knocking lumps on each other? Do you know, like a Froch Kessler Ward Gatti type fight? Castillo Corrales. When have you ever seen Mike Tyson in one of them fights and come through it and finish the fight? No. All Mike Tyson's defeats, every single defeat in his career, the two holy fields. The Buster Douglas are two holy fields. The Danny Williams and the 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 Kevin the, the the Irish kid who beat him, Mike Tyson's last fight. I forgot his name, but he's called Kevin, isn't he? Well that guy there, the Irish kid, right, will beat Mike Tyson. You've got six defeats there by five men because he fought Holyfield twice. Every single one of them defeats were well, when the guy fired back at him and they got into like a, a fight. It was that used to mowing people down that as soon as he got it put on him, he didn't like it, did he? And once you've been shown how to lose, it's pretty simple, isn't it? Unless you've got that inside you like R. Lee to come back from it like Lennox Lewis to come back from it, like Carl Frotch to come back from it, like Nigel Ben to come back from it. Not everybody's got it, so we're going to see if Joshua's got it now, because Joshua's had selected opponents, he's been selected. These opponents he's had, they've been selected for him, haven't they? That's basically it really, isn't it? So we're going to see, aren't we? We're going to see what happens, but like I said, it's a bully being confronted. Uh, is it going to be a reality check for Eddie Hearn? Will Eddie Hearn and Joshua part company now? Will they part company? Has Joshua got a contract with Eddie Hearn? Will Joshua want to sign with Al Heyman or Bob Arum? All sorts is going to be happening now. And the Sharks will be circling. Let me tell you now. The sharks will be circling. No ifs, no buts, they'll be circling now. And as I've just said to you, it remains to be seen, doesn't it? But the biggest con in our in our lifetime in sports was the Anthony Joshua con. It's the biggest con in our lifetime in boxing. I mean, I'm, I'm obsessed by boxing. It'll always be in my heart and in my blood. 
I'm obsessed by boxing. I am obsessive about it. I love everything about boxing. I just like to be involved. I just like to come up here. And I mean, when I finish doing this video here, we're going to get down to sorting the show out. Uh, I'm going to finalise things and I'm going to go through some things regarding Josh Whale and Tommy Frank. Um, we're going to get things moving, but as far as I'm concerned, I love boxing, it's in my heart. And this, what I've seen, and I've been ranting off about it for ages, and I don't forget, I had Ruiz to get beaten around. This, what I have seen, right, regarding Joshua, is a con. Like I said, he had the gifts at the Olympics, it were all plotted from down here, with McCracken, this has been like a, 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 from the day you walked in that gym, the day you walked in that gym 10 years ago. Joshua, 10 years ago, walked in that gym and he ended up an Olympic gold medalist because he was in London and he lucky. He got a world title in his 17th fight, a gift. Or 16th, 17th fight, whatever, a gift. He had gift defences against old men. His best wins, Vladimir Klitschko in his 42nd year, isn't it? 18 month on settee. Drill it into your head, 18 month on settee. After Tyson Fury took him to school. 69th fight. So, who's at fault? We've spoke about it, and I'm going to keep going on about it, and I'm going to have my day. Do you know what I mean? Glenn McCrory touched on it, didn't he? What happened in Miami? Lennox has touched on it. His dad flipping, chinks are in the armour. Did Eddie Hearn get greedy? Did Eddie Hearn think, do you know what? Well, with Sky, we've got a good thing going here. So why would he want to rock the boat when he's got a good thing? World domination. Is that, did, did Eddie's ego get too big? I think it did. Did Eddie Hearn's ego get too big? Yeah, I think it did. I think his ego got massive. I think his ego got that big that... They couldn't, they couldn't let it go. They couldn't let it go. That's what I think. I think his ego is off the charts. I mean, he, he drives a, a EH79 Rolls Royce. He's got the million pound mansion. He's got the fit missus. You know what I mean? Bing! Picture of Eddie's missus, Chloe. He's got the fit missus. He's got the house. He's got the kids in private school. He's from private school. He's never had a chink in his armour. He's had everything on a plate all his life. He's never had to do anything. His dad had to come up the hard way, but Eddie Hearn, he's had to come up the easy way, hasn't he? He's never had it. He's, a, where, but he's, had, never, he's had his own way all the time, hasn't he? He's had it in boxing, where they give him a pay-per-view for Audley Harrison. He's had other pay-per-view fights that shouldn't have been pay-per-view. I mean, everything's pay-per-view, isn't it? He's had it on a plate. So now we're going to see what a good promoter he is now. We're going to see what he does now. Because I see this heading to court. I see a lot of legal battles ahead. And they don't like legal battles of, her battles of Hearn. Barry Hearn lost a million pound in a legal battle with Steve Collins. Go online if you want to know about Barry Hearn. People like Helen from Irish Radio. And Terry Chapman Dharma. Rico Helia, uh, shout out to all them people, you guys. Uh, Ray, uh, uh, Raymond at uh, Hartley Pool, all them Daniel Goodwin, how are you doing, Daniel? All them people, and there'll be some I've missed out, who are hardcore fans. Google Barry Hearn, Steve Collins, court case, and go and, and click on a few links, and you'll get all the statements up, and you will see what sort of a person Barry Hearn is behind the scenes, the sneakiness that he did, that Steve Collins exposed in that case, was unbelievable. How he, he, he pulled dirty strokes on Chris Eubank. Chris Eubank ended up leaving him, didn't he? What he did to Chris Eubank and what was going on behind the scenes and all the stuff that was going on, I can see how Chris Eubank squeals about a lot of things. But I like Barry Hearn, he's a rascal, but I don't like Eddie. I don't like Eddie Hearn at all. At all. He's got to do a lot for me to get, for, for me to like him again. I used to like Eddie, but somewhere along the lines, his ego got off his, uh, 
He's, he, he, he lost plot. He started talking like all that Essex mob. You know where Eddie drinks, don't you? He goes to that Alex restaurant and he goes to that sugar hut, doesn't he? And all them mongy Essex mongy people, you know, all them fake people with fake teeth and Rolexes and, uh, and, uh, and Rolls Royces and all that. It's all a bit mongified for me. It, it, it isn't me. Do you know what I mean? It isn't me that. And I think somewhere along the lines, Eddie started to believe that he, were, he had a bit of street cred. He was starting to believe that he were like some of the people that knock around with boxers and boxing promoters because boxing promoters are well, known, are well renowned for being successful people in their own field and a lot of boxing trainers are successful people but they've also got that bit of a jack the lad inside them aren't they? People like Jimmy Tibbs, very successful scrap metal dealer but a bit of a jack the lad and he, he, did a, he did a big prison sentence for something he believed in and I back him all the way on that what he did you got to protect your family but then there's other people that are jack the lads like Den he's a bit of a jack the lad isn't he Den scrap metal business here he's got his hands in a lot he's got his dirty little fingers in a few dirty little pies a few big pies like and uh, but he's still a kid from is it Strasbrook Stradbrook is it a state in Sheffield He's still a kid from there, isn't he, Dennis? Oh, he's just uh, he's been he's in a situation where you know he's he's bruised, isn't he? But he still goes with me to Chippy down here and Clinton Woods. He's he's done all right. He still goes Chippy. You don't lose who you are, but Eddie Earn, he's trying to be that person, that Jack the Lad person, isn't he? But people in the boxing community, they all smile and say, "All right, Eddie, how are you doing?" And, and he thinks he's one of them, doesn't he, really? When he holds court at after show parties and he tells a joke and everybody laughs. And when Eddie tells a joke about somebody in, in your group, they'll all laugh, won't they? Everybody will laugh. But you might not find it funny, but you'll laugh as well. Because you want to keep him with Eddie. But then when you get in the car, you'll say, fucking tosser. But you're not going to rock the boat. Well, I don't give a fuck like that. And Dennis didn't give a fuck when he had hold of him at that IBF convention years ago. Because what's he going to do to Dennis? Tell Dennis he can't have dates on Sky. Dennis has got his own TV deal anyway, free sports. Our fighters get on TV, don't they? And if we end up with world champions and doing really well, free sports will have a better deal, won't they, with us? So, he ain't going to piss Dennis off, is he? What? So, then don't Den give a fuck about him. I don't give a fuck about him. He ain't going to make my life, any, my life any better. I've got something a bit more inside me. And when you've got something a bit more inside you, I always revert back to, well, my barrister sat me in a cell and he said, right, tell the police the, the names of the other two guys who are with Russ and you can walk today, you've done over 18 months on remand, you can walk today, you will walk today with a free stretch and you're out. I said, get fucked, I've got to live in that village. So I never went home then for about another 19 months. So, so I, I'm tried and tested, aren't we, my loyalty? Money is not my fucking God. Money is not my God. Boxing is my God. And you know boxing, you just tell the truth, don't you? If you tell the truth, you can't go wrong. It's all in my opinion. Surround yourself with good people. Joshua's got bad people around him. That's what's brought him down. All that back slapping. He needs to go back to the drawing board and dig deep like Dillian White did. Go back to the drawing board. I didn't like to say this because I like Rope McCracken, but maybe he needs to freshen up. Maybe Joshua might need to go to Mark Tibbs. Get Mark Tibbs to train you. Stop being big and stiff. Look what he's done for Dillian White. He's turned him around, hasn't he? I mean, what will that Jonathan Banks doing for Dillian White? He can't even hold fucking pads for starters. You know what I mean? There's only a select few who I see can hold pads. Robin Reed's the best guy I've ever seen holding pads. Robert McCracken's not bad on pads. I'm going to say it again, Mark Tibbs is good, but his dad was one of the first ones to do the pads, wasn't he? I don't know if any of you hardcore boxing fans know it out, know this, but pad work hasn't... It's not always... It's not always been about, you know. I mean... Not everybody's always... When have you ever seen Muhammad Ali doing the pads? I bet none of you can find any footage of Ali doing pads. I'd be surprised if you can find any Larry Holmes doing pads. 
Sonny Liston, Jack Dempsey, nobody did the pads. Jimmy Tibbs were a pioneer for pad work. He was one of the first ones to do pads in Britain. That's a true story. Now, Mark Tibbs, he will have soaked all that up like a sponge. Look at Dillian White now, how improved he is, Dillian White. Joshua didn't want that fight, that's why they low balled him. Dillian White's improved. Robin Reed does pad seminars, That he, he gets a living out of it. Pad seminars, goes around the country doing pad seminars. Like that's, He's a specialist in, the, in his field. That's why I brought him on board for, for when I worked with Peter Fury and you his last camp, or second to last camp with the pool F fight. Robin Reed did the pad work for you. I know it didn't work, did it? Because he didn't win the fight, did he? But he got cut, didn't he? But he's fantastic on pads. Uh, Glyn Rhodes is good on pads. It's not something that everybody can do. People can try and try and be all right on pads, but a lot of people get caught square on when they're doing pads. I'm I'm one of them. I I always do. It's because I'm not polished in that area. I can hold them, but I'm not brilliant at it. In like your Robin Reed mob, but I'm not bad. I'm not brilliant, as I just said. There's worse than me on the pads. There were trainers out there, so you have to. Things like that is technical stuff, and I'd like to see Joshua go with a technical trainer now and add something to his game because the old Robert, the Robert McCracken way, you know, the old freeze and force, Carl, freeze and force. Freeze and fours ain't going to work now, is it, for Joshua? It's a bit late in game now, pushing 30 year old to, 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 to learn how to box, isn't it? You see where I'm coming from? Tyson Fury, on the other hand, and Yui Fury, they're defensive specialists, aren't they, because they don't commit. Although Tyson commits a bit more than Yui, but they don't show you anything, do they? A bit like Kid Galahad, and he's a technical fighter. All your technical fighters have, have defensive skills, don't they? And I think that Dillian White's added a lot of that to his game now. He doesn't get caught much, does he? I know Parker caught him, didn't he? But he doesn't get caught as much as when he was with Jonathan Banks. So I'd like to see Joshua have a new trainer. And I'd like to see him... Now what? 22 minutes.